distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen, if you do hear my thoughts, please raise your hand as the feedback. Okay, thank you very much. We would like to invite all participants to enter the meeting room now as the official ceremony will begin in a few minutes. So what does that mean? Honorable Dean and Professor School of Public Policy, University of Maryland, Dr. Robert Orr, former Governor of Maryland, Governor Martin O'Malley, Governor of DKI Jakarta, Mr. Anis Rashid Baswedan, PhD, distinguished speakers, participants, and ladies and gentlemen, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to the event of public policy for the future workshop and training today, November 10, 2020. This workshop is a part of cooperation between the University of Maryland, an agency of the state of Maryland, located in College Park, Maryland, and the special capital region of Jakarta, Indonesia. This cooperation are undertaken to enhance of scientific knowledge and cultural tradition of the global level in keeping with the commitment of both parties to international scientific and cultural exchange. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, to proceed this conference, we kindly invite Mr. Yuri, Senior Lecturer of Training Department. To Mr. Yuri, deliver this report right now. To Mr. Yuri, please welcome. Uh, to represent uh, Ibu Maria, the head of the Human Resources Development of Jakarta, I will report the two days activities. Uh, please allow me to read it. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My peace and prosperity be upon us all. Firstly, Your Excellency, the Governor of Jakarta. Your Excellency, the former Governor of Maryland, Mr. Martin O'Malley the Honorable uh, Dean of the University of Maryland School of Public Policy, Professor Robert C. Orr, our colleagues in University of Maryland, the keynote speakers, the official of the Jakarta Capital City government, the mentors, the workshop and training participants, ladies and gentlemen. All gratitude to God Almighty that today's event, workshop and training public policy for the future for the future can be held. Your Excellency Governor of Jakarta, allow me to make a brief report on today's event. Today's workshop and training is the result of the collaboration between the Human Resources Development Board of the Jakarta Capital City Government the University of Maryland, the Regional Cooperation Bureau of the Jakarta Capital City Government and the Governor's Delivery Teams. The purpose and objective, the aims and objective of holding this workshop and training are to carry out the commitment and implementation of cooperation in the field of knowledge exchange, in particular regarding leadership fundamentals and strategic planning the resilient city in 21st century and the modern infrastructure for sustainable city. The speakers, the line out of speaker for the workshop and training consists of professor of the University of Maryland, official of the Jakarta Capital City Government and the director of Jakarta Regional Owns Enterprise. Namely, first professor, J. Christopher Mim, Managing Director, Strategic Issues, Government Accountability Office, Washington, District of Columbia. Professor Gerrit Jen Knapp, Executive Director and Professor, National Center for Smart Growth Research and Education at the University of Maryland. Professor Deb Nimir Clark. Distinguished Chair, Civil and Environmental Engineering at the University of Maryland. 
Dr. Sri Haryati SPI MSI, Assistant for Economic and Financial Affairs of the Jakarta Provincial Secretariat, Insinyur Yusmada Faisal, Master of Science, Assistant for Development and Environment of the Jakarta Provincial Secretariat, Sigit Wijat Moko, APMSE, Mayor of North Jakarta, Kapten Sarjono Jono, Joni Citro Kusumo, Presiden Direktur of Transportasi Jakarta, Arif Nasrudin, Direktur Perumda Pasar Jaya, and Dwi Wahyu Daryoto, Presiden Direktur of Jakarta Proper Tindau. In addition, during the workshop and training process, the participant will be guided by 20 mentors from various fields, consists of Vidya Iswara of Instructor of the Human Resources Development Board, Director of Jakarta Regional Owns Enterprise, member of the Governor's Delivery Teams, and lecture from pra Paramadina University and Pajajaran University. Participants, there will be 182 participants which came from various backgrounds, namely 125 administrator and supervisory official within the Provincial of Government of Jakarta, 40 official and staff of Jakarta Regional Own Enterprise, 17 academics, official from ministries and institutions, including those from the Human Resources and Development Agency of Ministry of Home Affairs of the Republic of Indonesia, and also from the general public. The training we will have for 15 days, starting from today, Tuesday, November 10th, till Thursday, 3rd December, 2020. Activities. The activities would be held through distance learning. They would be divided into several seasons, including lectures from keynote speakers, discussion session, question and answer session, and group presentation. In submitting this support, uh, this report, I humbly ask your Excellency Governor of Jakarta Province to provide us with guidance as service official open to workshop and training in this morning. Thank you. Bilahi Taufik wal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is kindly informed that today, November 10, Indonesia is commemorating National Heroes Day. Therefore, we would like to request your pleasure to do silent moment for a moment. Silent moment, please. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the next session will be addressed by the Governor of DKI Jakarta followed by declaring statement to officially opening the conference. Honorable Mr. Anis Rashid Baswedan, PhD, time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone in Indonesia and good evening for our friends in Maryland. Honorable Governor Martin O'Malley, the Dean of the School of Public Policy, University of Maryland, Dr. Robert C. Orr, or our, all our teaching fellow researchers from the School of Public Policy of University of Maryland, and also participants, distinguished speakers, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, uh, allow me to extend my appreciations to everyone involved, especially Governor O'Malley, and Dean Orr, and also everyone at the uh, University of Maryland School of Public Policy for engaging with us in this workshop. For me personally, 
it is quite a, a, a unique engagement. It feels like I'm back to the Terrapins, back to the School of Public Policies, yes. <laughs> and uh, it's been a while since the last time I visited the campus. And to have this workshop with University of Maryland is indeed uh, an honor and pride for us. And uh, let me uh, set a little bit of anecdote that after I returned uh, from my study in the US, most of the books were stored in the university library. I was with University of Paramadina and all my books and on public policies were stored at the uh, campus library so that everyone can access. As soon as I landed on this job in the governorship of Jakarta, I brought those books back into my library in my office because now those lessons that when we took the courses may so far distance, but now those lessons feel like those are foundations that help us or help myself to form policy, uh, to have extended perspective on policy formulations and also on uh, approaches that need to be taken when we have to decide on complex issues. So a lot of lesson learned uh, taken during the, my school time at the School of Public Policy is indeed very useful uh, in, our, in my job today. Now, this morning, we're having a workshop about public policy for the future at the time of pandemic. This is a time where the world is facing a tremendous and rapid change. I often uh, translate the meaning of crisis, be it health crisis, economic crisis, as expedited change. What mm. we are facing today is an expedited change in multiple arena. Uh, the world uh, is facing a future that we may never uh, face uh, in the past. So it is time for policymakers to also start anticipating what needs uh, to be learned and anticipate what are things that we need to unlearn and what are important in leadership what will be important in uh, public policy making and how society governance will be different uh, in the future. And we have already seen that this pandemic has shifted our approach. Just like our workshop this evening or this morning. In the past, if we have a workshop like this, then we will have it here in Jakarta or at, in College Park. And everyone will be flying from College Park to Jakarta or from Jakarta to College Park. And now we're doing it as a video conference, as a new norms, and that everyone accepted as uh, new norms of exchange of ideas, of even making decisions. Uh, for a country like Indonesia, we have 6,000 inhabited islands. Jakarta serves as capital city. So we have, just like the US, it spreads from San Francisco to Boston. The size is about the same, the spread of Aceh to Papua and the eastern part of Indonesia. When we have meetings, everyone come to the capital city, to Jakarta. And we have thousands and thousands of national meetings uh, every year here in this city. To the futures, we need to anticipate that perhaps this city may no longer be serving thousands of meetings that it used to be. Uh, so we are facing a transformations that we need to anticipate. The same thing with, with, with the US. And I think uh, we hope given the challenge that we are now facing, both us in, in Indonesia and in the US, I think we can have uh, exchange of ideas and uh, lesson learned that can be shared. And uh, allow me uh, to also uh, ask our participants, be active 
learn as much, prepare questions, ask questions, ask critical questions, and do uh, network and make follow-ups. We are hoping this first workshop will not be the last workshop. This will be first of series of workshop. As uh, I remember the, the remark by Kamala Harris a few days ago, she may be the first uh, women vice president, but may not be the last. This may be the first workshop, but will not be the last for sure. And I do appreciate uh, very much the participations of our friends from the School of Public Policy, University of Maryland, and Governor O'Malley. I, I truly hope that we can continue these collaborations uh, and also extend the collaborations on other uh, areas. And at the end, uh, allow me to also congratulate uh, our fellow Americans on the completions of the presidential elections. We all were watching from a distance and uh, we do hope a new beginning uh, for the US and the relationship between Indonesia and uh, uh, the US continue to be strengthened. Again, thank you to everyone. Truly appreciate your participations and look forward uh, for the productive uh, workshop. And I hope everyone able to learn and share. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Waalaikumsalam. Great speech. Perawatan kulit. We are now continuing our event to the next session. That is to hear a remarks, which is delivered by the Honorable Governor Martin O'Malley, former Governor of Maryland. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Governor Martin O'Malley. Hey, thank you very, very much. Uh, uh, this is the shortest flight I've ever made to, uh, to Jakarta. Uh, and it's an honor. <laughs> it is an honor to uh, be with all of you and, and to be able to salute the leadership of Governor Baswedan, of whom we are very, very proud, given the fact that, that your governor studied at University of Maryland and considers himself, I suppose, for all times, a bit of a Turk, a Terrapin. Um, so, so, Governor, thank you for your leadership. Uh, uh, thank you for the courage, uh, the hopefulness that you have brought to, uh, to your trust and to your job at a really challenging time for democracy all around the world. And I also wanna say thank you for, uh, for acknowledging the big accomplishment that we just <laughs> went through as a nation. Uh, probably, and Dean Orr may back me up on this, probably not since the Civil War in our country, that was uh, in 1865, have Americans engaged in international discussions about democracy with such a profound sense of humility as to how fragile and how difficult democracy is. So uh, I am so proud of the people of our country for turning out in record numbers, even in the middle of a pandemic, to cast their vote, to affirm the truth that uh, there is dignity in every person, that every voice matters, and that we're all in this together. So, uh, so thank you for pulling for us, and thank you for not giving up on the United States of America. I truly believe our best days are ahead of us. Uh, so let me share a couple of thoughts with you before I introduce uh, Dean Orr. The first is this, and it is a quote from Robert Kennedy, who over 50 years ago said, democracy is no easy form of government. Few nations have been able to sustain it, for it requires that we take the chances of freedom that the liberating play of reason be brought to bear on events filled with passion, that dissent be allowed to make its appeal for acceptance, and that men and women chance error in their search for the truth. Today, uh, we are engaging in this exchange, this, this mutual learning uh, from, from opposite sides of this tiny little blue marble of life that hurdles through space. And we do so at a time when governments the world over are undergoing what uh, Fareed Zakaria, a US journalist, has described as the stress test of COVID. 
this pandemic that's challenged that most fundamental of all responsibilities that any government has, and that is to protect the health and well-being of its individual citizens. But against that dark backdrop of a stress of a stress test, I believe that there is a new language of collaboration emerging. And I say this very mindful that I'm speaking with the leaders of a city of collaboration of, of Jakarta. You hear it in the language that's being used in the websites that so many of our citizens are accessing. I mean, the fact that we can see in real time whether hospital admissions or COVID cases are going up or down anywhere on the planet is a pretty remarkable thing. We never had the ability to do that, you know, 100 years ago in the, uh, in, in the last uh, uh, major pandemic that struck us. And you hear the phrases like, we're all in this together, huh? How do we bend the curve? The individual actions affect the well-being of the whole. And that, my friends, is also the language, the concepts, the truths we need to rediscover as human beings if we are going to reverse global warming, if we are going to save human life on this planet from a, from a, a, a sixth extinction event, if we're going to move to renewable energy, if we're going to, to manage the, the challenges of, of these times. So um, I wanna share with you one insight and two shifts as I conclude. Uh, you know, I served as mayor of the city of Baltimore. I also served as governor of Maryland. I believe governor at the same time that you studied at the University of Maryland. And our government received awards um, from the Kennedy School, uh, from a, another college uh, up the road called Harvard. And it was for the innovation, uh, I used to joke, of instead of measuring the inputs of government in an annual budget, we started measuring the outputs of government on a daily basis. We use the map, the map, in order to take separate silos of information to create a common operating picture. We use that map to lift up the leaders in an iterative process that was a lot more like software development, agile, you know, does it work, does it not? Does it work, does it not? Do we pivot, do we persist? And that openness, that transparency was made possible by new technologies that we've never had before. Geographic information systems and the internet of things. But as your own governor understands, it requires a shift in leadership. It is a shift from imagining that leaders are somehow high atop a pyramid of command and control and instead realizing that courageous leaders place themselves in the center of a collaborative circle as close to the latest emerging truth as possible. And the second shift is that it's a shift from command and control. Things don't get done anymore on the basis of because I told you to do it. Things get done on the basis of collaboration based on shared understanding that I can show you whether it works or whether it doesn't, that we can all see. And when I say that we all can see, I'm not just talking about people in government or people in academia or researchers, I'm talking about citizens, which is critically important in a government of, by, and for the people, especially if that government is not to perish from the map. And so against the backdrop, the dark backdrop of all of the death from COVID, against the dark backdrop of this crisis of trust in democracy, a new way of governing. And let us hope that Maryland and Jakarta together can lead the way for the world. Uh, to show that, in fact, tomorrow can be better than today if we make it so. So now let me introduce uh, the Dean of the School of Public Policy. Uh, dean Robert Orr uh, uh, served, uh, as, uh, uh, it served in the United Nations as a special advisor to Kofi Annan. He was uh, uh, undersecretary of the uh, 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 undersecretary general and as part of that role, not only was he responsible for uh, uh, the global fight uh, against poverty, uh, not only for uh, efforts to uplift the role of women 
in the world and the education of girls, but he also very significantly uh, was responsible for the global response to climate change. As an American, he was also very much involved in the United States joining the Paris Accords. And now he's the Dean of the School of Public Policy at the University of Maryland, and also is the head of NASPA, which is the association of all of the schools of public policy throughout the United States who are responsible for educating a new generation of, of Americans in this new way of governing with openness, with transparency, and with the measurement of performance in service of the common good. So with that, I introduce to you, Dean Robert Orr. Thank you so much, uh, Governor Bazweden and Governor O'Malley. I cannot imagine a better way to begin this program today. I just want to begin by saying that Governor O'Malley and I are so pleased to join you today, especially with the added significance of National Heroes Day. Remembering our history and honoring it is a good departure point for planning for the future, which is the essence of the collaboration upon which we are embarking with you today. We are planning for the future, even as the global COVID pandemic continues to impact our countries, hitting the most vulnerable in our societies the hardest. We are also fully aware that Jakarta has been experiencing flooding and increased stresses from climate change. There is no time to waste addressing these challenges and so many more. We fully appreciate the foresight on your part to move ahead even as we all manage our way through the current crisis. This is good leadership. Of course, it is no surprise to us that Governor Bazweden is providing great leadership. We are proud to call you a Maryland Terrapin Governor. As a prestigious Fulbright Scholar and graduate of our Masters in Public Policy, we know that Governor Basweden has prepared to lead for quite some time. We also know he has a bold vision for Jakarta and we are honored to work with you all in implementing this vision. We are looking forward to the ongoing partnership between DKI Jakarta and the School of Public Policy. Today, DKI Jakarta and the University of Maryland are launching a collaboration on urban regeneration and public policy. This will be an exciting workshop, but as Governor Basweden said, we hope it is only the beginning. I want to take a moment to congratulate Jakarta for winning the 2021 Sustainable Transport Award just two weeks ago for its mass transit system. You can be rightfully proud. Jakarta is the first ever Southeast Asian city to receive this prestigious award. Your efforts to build a modern and efficient mass transportation system are being noticed. Integrated public transportation systems can provide fair, affordable, and inclusive transportation for all, and you are definitely well on your way. I look forward to joining Governor Basweden again for the closing ceremony of this program in a few weeks' time. Until then, I wish you very well on the deliberations and problem-solving partnership we are embarking on today. Thank you. We look forward to this great partnership. Thank you very much for the Honorable Dr. Robert Orr for the remarks. Honorable guests, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the end of the opening ceremony. Honorable Government, Mr. Anis Rashid Basweden may leave the meeting room for having another agenda.